welcome rapper DMX. <laughs> I was like, you was getting it, getting it, getting it. <laughs> yeah, you got some fans here. Oh, yeah, I love the love. I love the love, you know? Yes. I have real fans because, like I said, despite the fact there's no music, they still listen, they still appreciate who I am, and um, I thank each and every one of you for that. Yeah. Well, all right, let's just jump into this. You are obviously hugely creative and talented. I told you. My, my son's got me into your music a long time ago, and I confess that I'm a fan. Thank you. You have sold over 30 million records. You have an amazing list of awards. You've appeared in seven substantial movies, but yet you say much of the time you're not happy. Why is that? To whom much is given, much is required. You know, and um, it, it, it looks fun because, you know, the fans only see, like, the movie or, you know, the... Uh, the stage show, but they don't realize the work that it takes to get there. And it's a lot of self-sacrifice, you know what I'm saying? Time away from your children, a lot of hard work, you know, dedication, just flying all over the place, airports all the time, dealing with different personalities. And it's to the point where if I'm having a bad day, I gotta stay in the house. Because once I walk outside my door, I belong to the world. You, you told my producers that you, you had no restrictions, we could ask you anything, yeah, you could yeah, talk about anything, but you didn't, um, you didn't want us to contact and bring on like your mother or ex-wives yeah, right. or ex whatever. Ex-wife. And, um, and you've been very forthcoming, yeah. so I'll, I'll why didn't you, you want us to talk to anybody else? Okay, because um, me and my mother, you know, we had a we difficult start. You know, she did the best that she could. Right. All right, and um, regardless of how rough our past was, we're in a good place now. And I don't want anything to interfere with that. You know, questions, no bringing up the past, nothing to interfere with that. And, and I told you that I, I told you that we fully respected that, yeah, and yeah. I want you, you to know ahead of time Thank that you, we, you did, you did. I don't, Thank you very much. Because I'm not an ambush interviewer, I, yeah. and I hate that. You told our field producer you didn't see me as an ass. Right. Uh, <laughs> and that the show is more than just a TV show. So, yeah. what, what do you hope happens here today? Um, I just want people to just, just, just get an a honest perception of who I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, you get these little 10-second news segments. Oh, rapper DMX did this, and rapper DMX did that. Get off DMX's, you know. <laughs> you know, like that. Like, 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 like you know, stop. Well, you do negative. give them a lot of content. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> How many people have ordered dare? Ran naked through the hallway. <laughs> come, on, come on, come on, let's be honest here. All right, all right. That's at least 30% of the audience. <laughs> but nobody's on TMZ. I want to know exactly what thought process went through your mind where you decided getting up and running around naked in the hallways of the hotel was a good idea. I mean, it's take me through that moment idea. where it's you decided. Just, it was a bet. It was a dare. Like, you won't do it. You won't do it. I'm like, all right, watch. And I did it. Was it like a double dog dare? Um, it was like, the, the, it was the, what the dare was order room service and run through the hallway naked. I'm like, I'll do that. And you thought, I'll do that. I'll so you do thought, that. this is a good idea. Th no, no, it's, it's, it's dare not about you good or bad ideas. I'll do that. You were advised not to appear on this show. Yes, I was. Why? Because, um, because of the prior situation with Ayala, and you guys kind of fall into the Oprah umbrella thing, and it's just like, don't even do it, it's not worth it. And I said, you know what, I just need for people to like look at me as I speak, you know what I'm saying, and, and know who I am, you know, by what I say. You know, not by what you see in the newspaper, not by what you read, but just, you know, you, you can tell a lot by a person by looking them in the eyes when you talk to them. What are the biggest mistakes that you think you've made? I, I wouldn't re redo anything, because it got me right here where I'm at right now, and um, I'm in a good place. No regrets. Yeah. No regrets. Um, you have 10 children. 11. 11 children? 11, yes. Uh, I must... It, and one on the way. And one on the way. And one, one on, on the, the way. way is number 12? That would be number 12, yes. Why are you having so many children? I'm not having the children. 
<laughs> no, actually, you are. No, I'm giving them the no, joint. No, actually, you are. Well, I, I mean, I'm, this is a joint thing, and oh, you're, you're right, responsible you're right. you for them after I, the fact. You're right, and, I, and I'm, they're, they're well taken care of. You mean, and I'm, I'm a, a influence, a big influence in their lives. I love all of my children, and I do see them and speak to them when I can. Like, like, I do have a relationship with my children. I love my children. I mean, I would never just, just not be a part of my children's life. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't it get expensive? Um, yes, it does, and time consuming. But like I said, I, I think if you can provide somewhat, you know what I'm saying, monetarily for your kids and be there for them, then you, then you should have them. Yeah. You should have them. Are you $1.23 million behind in child support? Yes, I am. And the reason being because at a time I was making $13 million a year. So if I'm making $13 million a year, then I can pay that. And I haven't made that in about 10 years, so of course I'm behind in payments, but the children are taken care of. In my view, mm -hmm. your talent is as intact today as it was when you were making $13 million a year. So why are you not making that money now? I don't know. Well, if you did know, what would it be? It's kind of a weird question. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> I still don't know. Like, if I did know, what would it be? That was a, that was a smooth move. It didn't work. <laughs> Well, let's take a break while we work that one out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Next, DMX claims he has been clean for over a year, but is that really true? No. How much do drugs play in his reportedly erratic behavior? We'll be right back. Greg was introduced to me when I was maybe 14. It was, it was something that drew me in and trapped me and, and just, just had a hold on me for a long, long time. And later, uh, Ed Heald Hart said, stop blaming everything on being a celebrity. You've done things that deserve to be addressed and changed. Respond to that. No, because I don't even know who that is. I'm not even going to waste time on talking to somebody who I don't know who it is. I was just for a warrant. They said there was marijuana. Usually when they, you know, find something, they put it on the hood of the car. We didn't see any marijuana. Even if you did find weed, like, Bag of weed. I'm not an idiot. I'm not. I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna get me a lot of time. I enjoy my freedom. I, I need my freedom. Well, controversial music artist DMX says drug addiction was something that drew him in, mm -hmm. trapped him, and had a hold on him for a long, long time. Take a look. I was introduced to my first drug when I was about eight. Family member gave me some weed. Yeah, hit this high, uh, you know, and they're laughing, and you know, you associate drugs with a good time. Crack was introduced to me when I was maybe 14. It was kind of slid, like, yeah, hey, smoke this weed. And I just knew that, you know, something wasn't right. Found out later that, you know, he had put some coke in the blood. That's where it started. I was 14 years old. He, he created a monster. He, he planted a seed, a seed that needed to be Ordered. It was it was something that drew me in and trapped me and, and just just had a hold on me for a long long time. I mean clearly it got worse because of my addictive nature. It got bad. I still smoke my green every once in a while. It enhances creativity. You know I have an addictive nature and that's that's just that's just, just what it's gonna be. By the grace of God I haven't been high since uh, you know more than a year. Did you say that? I've been out of prison for three years more than a year. I'm always going to be an addict. I'm going to be an addict until I die. That doesn't mean I have to get high. So, who gives an eight-year-old kid marijuana? A family member. I mean, I'm sure and it's the, happened What before. was the motive? Why would they do that? I don't know. I was eight. I don't know. I don't know. It, did it have an effect on you at eight? Did you um, realize it changed so. yeah. your mood and yeah. your feeling yes. at the time? Yes. yes. Yeah. How long was it before you think you had a drug problem? About 19, 20. Mm -hmm. But you don't have a drug problem now. Um, I think we're playing semantics here. Like, I, like, like, like I'm always going to have a drug problem. I don't have to get high. Do you I'm use three drugs now? Um, I smoke weed. I drink, yes. But that's it. That's it. And one day, that'll be gone. That'll be gone. Because my faith, I said, my faith is in God, man. And he's not going to remove it all at once. But he's, he's taking steps. And I'm taking steps every day to get better and get where I need to be. <laughs> Are you worried that if you get the right combination of mood and you're smoking weed and drinking that it could lead you back to a really dark place? Does that worry you? That doesn't worry me. That doesn't worry me. God has a plan for me. 
I'm not worried about anything. Wherever I'm, wherever I'm at is where God placed me at. And if I need help getting up out of there, he'll help me get up out of there. So I'm, not, I'm never worried about where I'm at. You say there was nothing you would change. No. Uh, you've been arrested, I added up, 25 times. That's it. 25, that's, that's it. I it was like 40 times at least, man. No, my, it's 25 times. my lockup game up, man. Uh, well, actually, uh, it, but I mean, is that his plan for what, you? Whatever, whatever what has saying? happened, whatever has happened was supposed to happen. Yeah. Explain. Okay. Uh, explain this for me, because I think it's, it's pretty, it, yeah. it's not as bad as you thought it was. Uh, but yeah. this is your timeline of being arrested 25 uh -huh. times just between 94 I would say, yeah, and I, 13. It goes back to 85. No, no, I know. I'm, we oh, okay. just picked up at this point. Got you, got you, got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you were arrested and convicted of drug possession. Mm -hmm. um, you were arrested and accused of raping a stripper in the Bronx. But cleared, you were cleared completely by cle D see, right. see here? Yeah. Yes. You were cleared yes. by DNA evidence yes. of that. So um, why is it even up there? Then you were arrested three times in Denver in connection with a stabbing, cleared of any charges. Why is that up there? Because you were cleared. But why is it up there that I was arrested? Because, every, because that's in the record. I think people ought to know you were cleared of these things. Okay. But if, if we don't put it up there, then they don't know I got arrested for them. <laughs> no, they do. That's how I know, because okay. it's public record. Okay. What's, it's public record is you You're were right. arrested. What's public record is not that you were cleared. Got gotcha. you. There's one here, driving without a license. Yeah. And in fact, that occurs all over the board. Yes. You, is this an act of defiance or do you not? All right, I'm a little stubborn with the, with the license thing, but child support is control of the license. You see how it gets a little sticky after that? You mean, it's like, you know, you're gonna pay $1.5 million to get a license back? Are you serious? Like, come on, like, like, you know, you can get buried under these things and, and it's kind of hard to get out, but it's being worked out. So you got to, they take your license because of child the support, child yes. support. Yes, they take your passport, which, which stops me from working. It, like, it, it doesn't make sense, but this is what happens. They take your passport, which, in, which you know, disables me from going overseas, making money. They take your license, like, I can't drive. Like, like, well, how am I supposed to work if I can't drive and I can't travel overseas? You, you have some charges here about animal cruelty. What's up with that? I love dogs. I love dogs. What the situation was, I went on tour, left my brother in the house. Um, he left my house. You know, dogs didn't get fed. I got charged with animal cruelty because it was my property. So a lot of these things just happened because I didn't put the right people in the right place or responsible people in the right place. And, sure. you know, it's my property, so. But you wouldn't change that? No. I'm going to say it one more time. I would not change one aspect of my life because it got me to where I am right now and I'm in a good place with God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I keep asking that. Because? Because. You want me to change something? No, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, it, just, it doesn't have to make sense to you. It makes sense to me. And I'm the one living yeah. this life. And I'm walking this path. And that's why these people love me. Yeah. There was a time where you were arrested for impersonating a federal agent. Yeah, about that. Of course, the police run out and run straight to the black guy. Go ahead, hands up. <laughs> I'm like, I called you guys. <laughs> and later. And all that stops right here. As long as the Lord's in my life, I will have no fear. I will know no pain from the light to the dark. I will know no shame. Spit it right from the heart, because it's right from the start that you held me down and ain't nothing they can tell me now. Lord, give me a sign. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here. I mean, you, you get some people who might look at my career or what they know about my career or my life and you know, look at it as, oh my God, it's a train wreck, it's whatever. Stop. Stop. It's really hard to become successful, famous, wealthy, and maintain the ideals that got you there. All right, well, I'm back with DMX. If you don't know him, you certainly know his music. And if you think you know him, hopefully today you're gonna find out things about him you don't know because, as he says, he gets a lot of quick bites on this news or that news or this tabloid show or that tabloid show. So we decided to sit down and have an at-length conversation about who DMX really is. And I, I, I'd like to take you through a, a one kind of high-speed process. Mm -hmm. uh, take a look at this picture. How old are you in this picture? Five, six. Five, six. Um, what do you think about when you look at that picture? I see a child. Mm -hmm. Child, full of wonder, curious. 
destined for trouble. And greatness. And greatness. Yeah. And greatness. At that point, did you get in trouble? I was, I was called mischievous. Mischievous? Yeah, that's what they called me, mischievous. He's, he's extremely bright, but he's mischievous. Yeah. It was always the butt. But right. yeah, what it was, I was just smarter than a lot of kids in my class, and I'd finish work sooner, and I didn't feel like I had to sit there and, you know, while the rest of the class caught up. So I, <laughs> I did things, you know, I threw yeah. pencils and spitballs and things of that nature. Yeah. Of course, it got me in trouble. All right. Take a look at this picture. Uh, uh, how old are you there? 14. Yeah. I, was, I was actually locked up in that picture. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's a jail picture. Yeah. Can't tell the pose? Yeah. <laughs> Plain t-shirt? Yeah, that's a jail picture. Yeah. Yeah. So what was going on in your life at that point as you look at that picture? What do you remember about that phase? Um, being incarcerated. But I, I'd, I'd been in different group homes, so I was already institutionalized. It was just like another place. What were you in for, do you recall? No. At 14? No. Right. I'd, no. Mischievous. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Got it. Got it. Take a look at this picture. This is the day that, I believe it's the very day that you signed uh, a record deal. What do you remember about that phase of your life? I felt uh, vindicated, like finally they see how talented I am. But do you get the odds against that happening? Against someone coming from where you came from mm -hmm. and getting to the point that you've actually been discovered to the point of signing a commercial record deal. Not with my talent. I, my talent, I should have been discovered. All right, take a look at this picture. Yeah. All right, this is yeah. kind of what I call the top of your game picture. I mean, this is... So I end all my shows, even to yeah. this day. Uh, so I end it, throwing up the X, after I pray. I pray with everybody, and then I throw up the X. Yeah. yeah. Um, was this a happy time? For you, I mean, you, said there, you said there was a lot of problems yes. that go with it and yeah. all. No, but being on stage is one of the best, with the best times, still, to this day. Being on stage is like the best hour, hour and a half that I get. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Best feeling in the world, being on stage. But you don't feel that same way the rest of the time? No, of course not. Then that would make that time special. Yeah. Uh, do you love yourself? Yes. Even when you're not? There yes, yes, just the rest of, course, of the time. Of course, yes. It took me but, a long time to get there, but yes, now I yeah. do love myself. Yes, I had to know. I had to learn myself, meet myself. You know what I mean, and now I know myself and I love myself. Yes, and I have so, I've done so for like for a few years. What did you have to overcome to get to the point that you love yourself? And this is an important question because there are a Blaming lot of myself, people out there like yourself. Blaming myself for a lot of things that I had no control over, um, except the responsibility for the things that I do have control over, and um, being willing to make adjustments. Yeah. Yeah. This is a mugshot. That's how I look without a haircut. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> my hairline is way back here. That's why I got the boy head. It don't grow even. That's just what I look like without a haircut. That's all that is. I mean, I wasn't even high in that picture. Drunk, weed, nothing. I mean, I just got the messed up hairline. If that's a crime, then I'm, I'm going to jail right now. All right. Well, as one that has thinning hair, I understand. Right. <laughs> You, you're still holding on. My, my hairline is receding. Just let it go. Let it all go. Yeah. Get rid of it all, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. There was a time where you were arrested for impersonating a federal agent. Yeah, about that. How, how does how does that it's just like, work? It's just some of the things you do. Like I said, like when, when, you, when you're a celebrity, it's rare that you get fair treatment. You either can get away with anything or get arrested for nothing. And... I was just, I was actually late in the airport, and I had, had uh, an expedition, and I had the police package in there. I put a supercharger in there, the blacked out limbs, had the police lights, had the siren, the PA system, all that. And this guy was driving in front of me, and he's driving really slow, and I'm like, I hit the lights. Wait, wait, wait. He pays me no mind. I'm like, hold up, he's not respecting my authority right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, pull over. I hit him on the PA system, and he still didn't pull over. So I run around, I pulled him, I'm like, yo, homie, like, what if I was a real... You know, the emergency vehicle. So I just cut him off. I jumped out. I was like, yo, man. And I told a lady, it was in the parking lot, the airport parking lot. I said, um, call the police. This guy's driving like an ass. And of course, the police run out and run straight to the black guy. Go ahead, hands up. I'm like, I called you guys. <laughs> yeah, they came and locked me up. And I said, yeah. So you called the cops on I yourself? Told the, I told the parking lot lady, yeah, the parking lot attendant, 
in the airport, the security and to call the police because he was driving. Like he, he seemed to be under the influence of something because he was just like, uh. It seems like you've been arrested 25 times for nothing. No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. You have been guilty of something. Of course, I've been guilty of a lot of things. Yeah. Okay, I, I've got some tweets up here. See them on the screen yeah, up there? Yeah. Uh, Ed Healed Hearts said, Stop blaming everything on being a celebrity. You've done things that deserve to be addressed and changed. Respond to that. No, because I don't even know who that is. So I'm not even going to waste time on talking to somebody who I don't know who it is. One thing I've learned, that is to not to accept anybody's belief about what, how they feel about me. Because when you believe, you, if you believe them when they tell you that you're on top of the world and you're the king, then you're going to believe them when they tell you that you ain't so it's like, you know what? Appreciate the compliment, if it's a compliment, but I'm going to stick to what I believe about myself and I love me. So right. I just, I just, I don't want to hear the good or the bad. It seems hugely illogical okay. to have 12 children with six different women. Mm -hmm. Do you make any effort to not get women pregnant? I mean, do you yes, ask I'm about a, birth I'm control? A, do you use birth control? Do you? Oh, you know what? I mean... I can see why you might feel like that, yeah, but um, I look in my children's eyes and I can't picture life without them, each one of them. It's real hard to divide daddy by 12. It's real hard daddy to do that. Daddy to the when, world. Okay, hey, daddy may belong to the world, but his responsibility are to his children. Got that, got that. Right? Got that, got that. And, and, and they are well-mannered, well-raised children. All right, well, let's take a break. Next, we're gonna meet DMX uh, music producer and longtime friend who says DMX needs to go from a wildfire to a controlled fire. We'll find out what he means Makes sense. next. And he knows this one's here. This is not an ambush. He knows that, it's an, it's uh, ambush. Like, he knows he's here. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Is this the biggest mama's boy ever? He'll always be my baby. He's 28 and mom powders him after the shower. In all the nooks and crannies. America's most watched talk show. That's tomorrow. Well, from multiple arrests to filing bankruptcy to running around a hotel naked, he's been willing to talk about anything. Many people are wondering, what is behind popular rapper DMX's troubling behavior? Now, his music producer, Grease, admits to being concerned for his longtime friend, who he loves very, very much. Take a look. X is one of my best friends. I've known DMX for 20 years, and we've been working together ever since, and been just like family. I'm concerned about X. X needs help overcoming substance abuse and addiction. X is a drug user and he has problems with cocaine. We could be at a club, at a bar, chilling, and there always will be persons that come up to say, hey bro, I got some coke, you wanna bump? The temptation is always there. X have to work on a better relationship with his kids, with his family, with the same blood as him, by any means necessary. I want Dr. Phil to help X with substance abuse by way of helping him mend up the holes that's in him. X is in a point in his life where change has to happen now, right now. Well, Grease is with us today, so I appreciate it. Met you just a little bit. We were... <laughs> We were doing some math earlier. You guys have known each other 20 plus years. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. Uh, but yet you say that out of all of that time, he needs to make a change now. What yeah. change does he need to make? Really calming down with a lot of the outside of different things is coming back into whole, to more family, more love, more natural things. Right. Yeah. You said in your lyrics, you bury your soul. Yes. So you really open up and bear your soul. And well, I want to take a look at some of the lyrics from your song. How about I pick the lyrics? Who We Be. I think you'll like these okay. lyrics. Um, the hurt, the pain, the dirt, the rain, the jerk, the fame, the work, the game. I like what you said. Yeah. Did it, did it. The friends, the foes, the bends, the hoes, these. Studios. These studios, the shows, why don't you just read it? I, studios, I like the, the way shows, you read it. It comes and it goes. The jealousy, the envy, the phony, the friendly, the one that gave him the slugs, the one that put him in me. The snakes, the grass, too long to see. The lawnmower sitting right next to the tree. It's right there, just mow that grass and you'll see the snakes. Yeah. So you write 
Everything I say, yes. Yeah, I mean, that's, you, you write all of your yes, songs. all of my lyrics. I wouldn't be able to call myself an artist if I didn't write. You've had, um, I guess I would call it a gospel song, or certainly... A gospel a, a, song and a conversation with the Lord on every album. Uh, on yes. every, on every album. Lord, give me a sign. Yeah. I've pulled some of those lyrics out. Uh, uh, tell me what these lyrics are and what they mean. It says a conversation with the Lord. I really need to talk to you, Lord. Since the last time we talked, the walk has been hard. Now I know you haven't left me, but I feel like I'm alone. I'm a big boy now, but I'm still not grown. I'm still going through it, pain and the hurt, soaking up trouble like rain in the dirt. And I know only I can stop the, the pain with just a mention of my Savior's name. In the name of Jesus, devil, I rebuke you for what I go through when trying to make me do what I used to. But all that stops right here. As long as the Lord's in my life, I will have no fear. I will know no pain from the light to the dark. I will know no shame. Spit it right from the heart, because it's right from the start that you held me down. And ain't nothing they can tell me now. Lord, give me a sign. You've had, um, you've had a song on every album, a conversation with God. Yes. You've had and a prayer, uh, and a prayer, and I think you've had three conversations with the devil. Three conversations yes. with the devil. Why with the devil? Well, to make a fair decision, I think you have to be aware of both sides. And I was approached, so of course I had a conversation. It didn't mean I, it doesn't mean I rolled with him sure. or believed him. I just was able to recognize him by what he said to me and what he offered me. He said, oh, now I know who you are. That's why I stopped talking to him. I've put out seven albums, but he's only on three. Right. All right, we'll be right back. Yeah. I love women. And I've been the same way since day one. You mean? Okay. And I made you aware of it. I'm gonna as many as I want to until my falls off. Well, after 14 years of marriage, multiple affairs, and six children out of wedlock, controversial music artist DMX and his wife finally decided to call it quits, but not before making one last ditch effort to save their marriage. They were on the VH1 reality show, Couples Therapy, and he's correcting me while I'm reading this. Right, so. that, that was not to save our marriage. Okay, what we, was we, it? We were already separate, we realized we were friends, we had a good relationship. What happened was, she said that there were some things that she didn't get a chance to say because of how we broke up, and I gave her the opportunity, you know, I'll go on the show with you. I, I'll do it, I'll do it. And, Here's you know, a clip of what really happened. It turned out too good. <laughs> Once I found out everything and everything hit the fan, you know, we kind of, we separated, but it was it felt like I was more abandoned because I know I gave my all. You know, I was innocent in the situation you know, from someone that I really loved. So it's like on top of me not really having a husband, which he didn't ever realize, I also didn't have a father for my children because it was like I was being mommy and daddy. I think it's best that we just stay friends for real and we raise our children together and there's no intimacy. I think it works better like that. Are you glad you did that? She asked you to do it. Are you glad you did it or not glad you did it when you did this, this reality show? This um, VH1 couples... I don't really remember. But what, one thing I'm not going to do is, is say anything negative or derogatory about that woman. And, um, oh, you know, I'm not asking you. No, I'm just, I'm just putting that out the, out, the, out the gate. I'm just letting you know that, that that's not going to happen. You know, she's a good woman. Um, we have a good relationship. And I'll leave it at that. You've said that you recognize that you have an anger and a temper. Yes. Uh, what are you angry about? Why do you think you're angry? Well, now? No, just in general. Oh, di different things get me angry. Like, I can't, there's no one thing that, well, well, somebody ignoring me, that gets me that's angry. How's, this interview, some, how's this interview gone so far? Uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. I want to eat. Um, I mean, it, 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 we, we, we got off to as good a start as we could. Meeting you was, was a pleasure, you know what I'm saying? You know, the little meeting we did beforehand. I appreciate that. I can see the genuineness in you. You know, you're also the host of a TV show, and you have a job to do as well. Respect that. But I'm not really a morning person, so like I said, it, it, it got off to as best start as it could. You know? Yeah. It's 1.30. Yeah, it's, I, I, I'd still be asleep normally. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you're kind of a night owl? Yes, I do the studio at night. Yeah. Um, if I'm going to do a show, it's at night. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like I'm not really up at this time. Yeah. 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 But I'm here. Yeah, you are. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you want to talk about? Anything um, that you want to set the record straight on? You want people to understand about you? You know what? 
I really don't care. I really don't care. I really don't, because um, I, I get enough love from the people that know me, I mean, to get me through. Um, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. If, whatever you don't know about me, you won't know about me. So let it go. Final comments with DMX when we come back. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Some huge DMX fans flocked to Twitter with some pressing questions when they found out DMX was going to be on the show. You see some of them up here. Carrillo Sue says, stop talking and listen, DMX. It's a Dr. Phil show. Put your defense down and don't squander this opportunity. Um, do you think you've been defensive? Um, somewhat. What has made you that way? I don't remember what exact incident, but um, I mean, I'm just naturally defensive. I am protected because I have a good heart, so I need to protect that heart. You mean? So yeah. I am somewhat defensive. Um, let's be real here, tweeted. In what ways do you think your antics are affecting your children? My, my children see me. They know me. They know the person that I am. So, you know, of course, it might be hurtful as far as school goes, whatever. You know, children can be cruel. And, you know, they're, they're warriors at the same time. And it's just give them a tough skin, a tough But they shell. know you. They know me. They know yeah. who their father is. And they, they love their father. And they know their father loves them. Now, Mama Roz is here. Ask him your question. How's your life as a rapper, entertainer, and actor contributed to some of the bad choices you've made over the years? They've made, um, they've made um, substances easily available to me, you know, made them easier to get, made them um, more popular, more cool to do, you know, but um, it's also taught me to fight to be humble. You mean? And it's not as easy as people think it is, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you're on top of the world and millions of dollars is just to remain humble and feed somebody that's hungry and at the end of the day you're only worth what you can do for somebody else. Mm -hmm. I'm Roz. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I asked you if there was anything else you wanted to say and you said no because... Well, actually, you... there is one thing I want right. to say. Anybody, she... uh, any prayer warriors, any Christians in the house, keep me. Um, pray for me and I pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all, all I right. want to say. Yeah. I have to say, and I, I, I think you probably have already said you disagree that, with this, but I have to say, I think that the fact that you had a history as an addict mm -hmm. and you say that you're out of that dark place at this mm -hmm. point, mm -hmm. but that you're still drinking and smoking weed mm -hmm. is playing with fire. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a danger mm -hmm. To you, I think it's a danger to anybody that's been uh, down that road, and I think you telling yourself mm -hmm. that you can do that and control it, and it's not a problem. That's not what I said. Uh, is well, it's what you're doing. I said it's taking away one thing at a time. It ain't gonna just take everything away all at once. Unless you know yeah. what you're talking about, you shouldn't say it. You can say that because I haven't been there. I don't know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking about, and I have buried many a kid that has wound up down a dark road with drugs because he's going to do this a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here, and before you know it, it owned him, and I have spoken at the funerals. I've buried them. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about when I say drugs can get you in a bad place. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. And I, you're trending in the right direction, and that's great. Uh, I want to give a special thanks to DMX and Greece uh, for being here today. So thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. You did a good job. Thank you. All right, DMX.